okay guys welcome back and we'll continue our previous discussion here as well so in first part we have discussed the mathematical relations to find the zeros of an FIR filter and the symmetry properties of zeros of h of z so from these symmetry properties we would like to uh, solve one numericals uh, here so that uh, you can understand that how the zero locations can be found if one of the zeros location is given so let us consider this example then an FIR filter with a linear phase so it is clearly mentioned that it is with linear phase and earlier whatever symmetry properties we have seen uh, there we have uh, seen that if it is in linear phase then there are some certain properties symmetry properties it follows so if we plot it on the z plane so what we find it is in the z plane so this is the real axis and this is the imaginary axis so this is at 0.5 and this is 0.5 so at the cross section of these two here we have a zero location okay so let us consider it as z1 so this zero location is given and we are supposed to estimate the other zero so let us first try to understand that what type of zero it is in previous symmetry we have seen that there are different kind of uh, zero so what kind of zero it is because directly it is not given it is given in the Cartesian form so Z1 that is equal to 0 0.5 plus J 0 0.5 so in polar form how we can write it this implies that Z1 the magnitude of it so magnitude of it we can find under root 0.5 square plus 0.5 square and the angle we can find as 10 inverse b by a so here my b and a both are in this thing that means here we have a plus j b form so here b and a both are same right so this is what is the angle so this is r and this is theta so this 0 z1 is in the form that r e power j theta so in this form we have uh, this uh, uh, 0 given so if it is a complex 0 then let us see how many zeros we can have ok so let us solve this uh, uh, magnitude and uh, uh, the angle so I request you to pause the video and try to find it of your own using your calculator. I am directly uh, writing the result here. So the result is Z1 is equal to 0 0.707 and angle is 45 degree. So in R theta form we can say that R is equal to 0 0.707 and theta is 45 degree which is nothing but pi by 4 in radian so in this form we have z1 now if we have z1 like that then what should be other zeros so z2 will be definitely will have z2 which will be z1 inverse so inverse of z1 will give us 0 0.707.45 degree inverse so that will give us z2 is equal to 1.414 and for inverse we will have minus 45 degree so now if we use that uh, uh, if we try to convert it into the Cartesian form then we will be using R cos theta minus J sin theta 
so in this case it will be like this so theta is minus 45 degree so this will lead us to z2 value as 1 minus g so z1 from z1 we have found z2 now further symmetry property will give us z3 value so z3 value what we will get is z1 conjugate so z1 conjugate means it is very simple that real part will keep same and imaginary part will just change the sign so 5 minus j uh, uh, 0.5 minus j 0.5 so once again what we find that uh, in r theta form it will give us 0 0.707 and angle minus 45 degree okay degree you should write so without uh, degree thing it will not work or you can if you if you want it in the uh, radial form then pi by 4 also you can write now if we have this one then definitely z4 will be having as inverse of z3 z4 is inverse of z3 which is nothing but z1 conjugate inverse so that will give us inverse of uh, this one 0 0.707 angle minus 45 degree inverse so z4 value will be getting as 1.414 angle now if we inverse that minus sign will become plus so we will be getting this one so nothing but once again using this r cos theta plus j sin theta this form if we use we will be getting it as 1 plus j so four zeros we are getting one zero is given so z1 is given as 0 0.5 plus j 0 0.5 z2 we have got 1 minus j and z3 we have got as conjugate of the z1 so that is 0 0.5 minus j this point uh, 0 0.5 and uh, z4 we are getting 1 plus j so if we now try to plot it in the z plane what we observe suppose this is my z plane okay this is the real axis and this side we are having it imaginary axis okay so so suppose this was 0.5 this is 0.5 this is minus 0.5 here this is also 0.5 this is suppose this is minus 0.5 so this is j axis j omega axis imaginary axis and say this is minus 1 and this is plus 1 so this is plus 1 and this is minus 1 so now what all zeros we have we have a zero here so this is my z1 we have another zero at 1 minus j so this is uh, 1 and minus j means at this point we shall be having it at this point 1 minus j and then we will be having another one at 0.5 minus j 0.5 so 0.5 minus j 0.5 means at this point we shall be having one okay so this is uh, z1 this is my z2 this is z3 and last one we have j so plus one plus j so at this point we'll be having z4
that is 1 plus g so z1 z2 z3 z4 so this is how we need to plot it and if you uh, are interested you can also draw the unit circle okay unit circle you can draw so but it will become little clumsy so it's up to you if you want you can draw it or if you don't want you can leave it also because zeros are not having much importance whether they are within the uh, unit circle or outside the unit circle however for pole position that is very very important okay so i hope uh, this thing is now clear to you so once again these references that i have followed to solve this numerical and thank you very much and then part 3 will be starting the discussion on the design methods of FIR filter. Thank you.